Well, we're going to be starting a, a job here. It's actually going to be in two phases. This is going to be the first phase right now. Uh, it's currently a living room that has a laminate floor down. We're pulling the baseboards right now. Uh, soon we're going to be pulling out this old laminate to see what uh, the condition of the concrete is. And uh, oh my gosh, we are going to have to cut this trim off of this uh, hearth right here. They glued it like super solid with liquid nails. And the thing about it was, it's supposed to be an expansion gap, and they never had a gap in there to begin with because they had it so filled in with liquid nails, which by the way, is not flexible anyway. It's not, liquid nails should never be used to put down trim. Uh, you should use something like uh, Sika construction adhesive or something that is really strong but dries flexible. Okay, well, well we just pulled the plastic and the uh, foam underlayment out of the way and we have found an enormous hump that comes through here. And uh, Pat's got his fingers literally underneath the straight edge. So in about, uh, I would say six feet, it changes elevation by about three quarters of an inch. Uh, there's some other places in through here that we're gonna have to fix, but this just gives you an idea that, once again, you just cannot trust your eyes and think that your concrete is flat. And uh, we do live in Arizona where the concrete work is horrible, unfortunately. And show you just how clean we can run two of these grinders. And these are uh, Edco TG10 uh, 220 volt grinders that we've modified. And with these vacuums, we are going to keep this air super clean. Go ahead guys, start it up. All right, uh, we're almost ready to put down some uh, Primer L from a pay. Uh, but first we set up our screeds here and I can want to show you right over in that corner over there. Uh, that's 5 eighths of an inch low. And then as you get right there where about where that Doro is at, it actually becomes 3 quarters of an inch low. And I'll just kind of spin it over here. By the time it gets to that gray patch sitting right over about right there, it, uh, it's only about 3 sixteenths of an inch low, but as it goes way back towards the end over there, it goes back up to about a half of an inch. Well, what the boys are doing right now, uh, they are applying the Mape Primer L, uh, which is going to percolate down through the surface of the concrete. Um, and it's going to uh, form a layer that's going to allow the ultra plan to flow really nicely and bond extremely well. So everybody watching, you're going to see the leveler coming out the other side of the screws, and that's okay for right now. We don't care. It's going to take several mixes before we even get enough going that we could actually screed. Take us two days to put all the leveler down on this floor.
So this right here is about eight bags of leveler that we put down. And bear in mind, we, we're going to still have to go around the edges. Um, and you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm talking about here. You can see right through here, you can see there's no leather along there. And way over on the other side, let me stay if I can stand up. See how there's not all the leveler along the edges? Plus that leveler tapers away. It's not perfectly flat along those edges. It tapers away. But tomorrow after this really flat area here is dried, then we can extend the screed all the way to the edges, pour leveler, and fill all that in too as well. So once all done, this will be what they call a super flat floor. So this is how we fill in the, the edges. We just take a long straight edge. In this case, this is a nine foot straight edge. See it right there on the end. And we just hold it nice and flat onto that area. And we just screed it off that way. Fill in the blanks. Just take your time. Don't get in too big of a hole. And just let it screed. Just like that. Well, this is our third day, the morning of the third day. Of course, the first day we tore out all the laminate and started on the floor prep. And yesterday we finished putting all the, the Ultra Plan 1 Plus down. And we have just uh, finished uh, total polishing systems uh, machine across the floor. And now we have this 20 foot straight edge laying here. And I'm going to come close to it here in a minute and do a close up video all along that 20 foot straight edge just to show you really how perfect this system works out.
All right, we're getting ready to uh, spread this uh, this first area, and we're going to be using the Mape, uh EcoBond, the 995. Um, it's their top of the line. It's a combination sound deadening adhesive uh, along with moisture vapor protection. So it's their top of the line. They have a special trowel. Uh, Marty, can you hold that up there? It's got a, a blade that kind of clips onto there, and it meters it out perfectly so that when the wood finally goes down in through there and lays down flat, you'll get 100% coverage, assuming that you professionally flatten your floor, similar to the way we've just done that. So right now, Marty's just uh, back trailing it on first to give it a nice good scratch coat and then he'll come back over it with the teeth here. This glue is pretty amazing. Um, every time we install a wood floor and after it's uh, set up the next day we come back and walk on it, you can really tell that the glue is deadening the sound of your, your footsteps. Um, so it makes a difference in how your wood floors sound when you walk on them. They're, they're really solid, but they're super muffled. Um, it's just a great glue. And of course it is the kind of glue that you're supposed to use when you use uh, the Mapei Ultra Plan 1 Plus leveler. You want to make sure that your adhesives and your levelers are compatible. And of course we've already went through and pre-cut all this wood in. And it's, they're just stacked in a single row right now, but they're all set up to just go back into place. The cool thing about uh, pre-cutting kind of an intricate run in advance is you're, you're totally assured that your wood is going into nice, fresh, wet adhesive. Uh, it hasn't had a chance to get filmed over. Um, you have the best opportunity of getting a well-adhered uh, wood installation. See, this is where the advantage of pre-cutting this in really comes in handy. Because imagine trying to cut this in after the glue was spread. It would be so messy. Wouldn't even be fun. And installing wood floors should be fun.
control, we're going to pre-install this area back here and we'll just make it join on as we come through. Again, that's the luxury that we have of pre-cutting this all into, into place the first time around before we put the glue down. Homeowners that are thinking about trying to do this, assuming you have a flat floor, you should probably try to pre-cut your your row or your your glue spreads in in advance uh, to give you as much time as you possibly need in order to accurately cut your wood in. And I don't actually recommend homeowners installing their wood floors unless your professionally your concrete has been professionally flattened. Out here in Arizona. We consistently, on almost nearly every job, we find some form of concrete out of uh, tolerance by nearly three quarters of an inch in about three or four feet. Um, this particular job required 22 bags, or at least this living room required 22 bags of leveler, three and a half gallons of primer, seven hours of the large 10 inch Edco and TPS machine, and four hours of the seven inch grinder. And these are tools that you cannot rent at Home Depot or Lowe's or A to Z rents. See how that all just joined right back on together? And you're probably wondering why are these little spots here in the floor that look like little squares. Why isn't there any glue there? Well, the reason is as the wood goes underneath this hearth, there's going to be no way for us to hook a clamp onto it. You see, from there over to here, we'll be able to put clamps on there to keep that together. But since we can't do it here, as we line this up here, we're going to put a spot of hot glue on each of these here. So as this last row goes in, it'll be locked into place won't slide anymore and we'll be able to join on on the rest of the rows and be able to push against them. And it doesn't take much. Just a, a nice full, you know, blob of glue. One there, one there. Yep. That's it. Now we'll line that up. So now what we're doing now is we're putting some straps down and we're kind of putting a little tension on them. Make sure that there's no uh, uh, areas of the wood that aren't maybe quite snug. And as we tighten them up, we use blue tape to make sure that they can't come back apart until after they dry. So maybe, you know, tomorrow we'll come back and pull the blue tape off. See so yeah, it's just a little bit snug. Use blue tape just like that. So this is the end of our day. And you can see Marty going through and just kind of getting the residual glue off the floor. It's important to do this. <laughs> if you wait until tomorrow, it's not fun to try to get that off the floor. But everything turned out pretty nice, as you can see. By tomorrow, we'll have all the wood laid and should have all the T molding on in preparation for the baseboards to go on on Friday. So we should be done with this floor on Friday, complete. So uh, we've already put down a bunch of trim over here. We left one piece out because I wanted to show you how we do this. Now for those of you out there uh, that are wondering how you put trim down, let me just share with you, you do not want to use liquid nails. You want to use something like Sikabon construction adhesive. Uh, this product is extremely tenacious and once it dries it's going to hold the trim extremely securely in place and yet it'll be flexible, so if the wood needs to expand and contract, it has a place to do that. Uh, this is the only trim adhesive that we will use. 
on our jobs, and I can guarantee that our trim will stay down for as long as you live in your home, without a doubt. It will never stop. It will never come up. Now what Marty's doing right there, he's putting a little construction adhesive right at that joint so when you put it together, we're actually going to bond the two pieces together at that point. And that just helps ensure that you don't get any raising or lowering of the two pieces when they, after they dry. And what he did is he put a bunch of blobs about every four inches, three or four inches, tall enough so as that T-molding went down into there, it compressed itself down into the Sika bond. And the Sika bond began to uh, fill up the gap. Um, so now we're going to take spare pieces of wood and take some weights and sit on there and hold that down into place. Just like that. Is making sure that the joint lined it up perfect right there. Just like that, perfect. So right now we're uh, just preliminarily starting to go over the floor, take care of, uh, you know, we've got a few adhesive smears, that's part of an installation. Obviously, we, we clean up as we go, but when we turn this floor over to the customer, um, it will be perfectly spotless, flawless, no caulking smears, no adhesive smears. I mean, it'll be beautiful. So one of the things I wanted to point out before we get this carpet put back, um, it, if you look really close, over on this side over here, there's about an inch gap on the, between the carpet and the wood. And now the wood is cut in perfectly at a 90 degree angle, but when they put this carpet in, they actually put the carpet in crooked. So when we come back with our power structure, we're going to stretch that over and we're going to make these, uh, the pattern on the carpet appear to be straight, at least at the wood. So that's just you know one other kind of detail thing that we're really careful to do uh, is the way we put our carpet back. It's, it's very detail oriented. So uh, you remember I showed you that video before of the carpet, how crooked it is. Well, I'm going to use the power stretcher here and I'm going to stretch this carpet back straight right along through here. Uh, so when it's done, it, it, the carpet doesn't look like it's crooked with the wood. So to get started, um, I've anchored this side over here because when I start pulling over here, it's going to want to pull this away from the wall and I don't want that to happen yet. So now that that's done, this is the power stretcher, and I'm going to I'm going to pull this to the point where I can start getting a, a pressure fit right here, just like this. And as that starts to go, I'm going to slowly let off, lock that again, continue on with this right here like this. And I'll come over here like this, do the same thing again, lock it. And I'm actually putting a little more pressure on it with my waist. And by the way, um, this is double stripped along through here, so I can kind of show you what I'm doing here. This is double stripped to make sure that it gets a nice good grip on it. See how you just go through here and you just work yourself across? And that's one of the cool things if you hire us, folks. Not only can we flatten floors to a sixteenth of an inch and twenty feet, but we can professionally put your wood floors in. And then when we're done, we can also put all your carpet back, too. So that means you don't have to go and hire a bunch of other people to come back and do the, the finish work. Now, you couldn't really do this with a, uh, with a knee kicker because you'd end up putting too much... Uh, stress on this carpet, you'd probably rip it, rip some of the threads. That's why with a power stretcher, it's like surgery. You can really get in there and make a lick nice. And I'm about ready to finish off the last part of it right here. A little bit tighter. 
That's a luxury too about these Roberts. They have a lock. I can click it down where, right where I want it to be. And just like that, this carpet has been put in nice and straight. Uh, it's totally secure. You don't ever have to worry about it coming up. And that's just another reason to hire Arizona Home Floors to do all of your wood and put all of the baseboards and the carpet back. Well, it's official. We have just finished what we call the living room here. And in a minute, I'll take a little more detailed close-ups, especially of the hearth where we undercut and uh, even some of the trim. But it really turned out pretty. This product here that we put down is called, uh, it's called Smooth Sailing. It's distributed by TriWest Distributing here in, uh, in Phoenix. So this is just to kind of show just how beautiful the hearth is finished off here. You see a tiny little bead of haystack sanded caulking that goes right along here. And so we undercut this hearth. The wood actually slides underneath this by about an eighth of an inch. And then of course, here's our baseboards. Here's how nicely these got finished off right in through here. And where all the end joints came together, we also finished those off there with a, a little bit of a, a marking pen to blend that all in. But here's a little corner in here. It kind of turned out nice. See how pretty this is? And then the, uh, the carpeted areas, this is where I finished that off right there and made that all nice and straight. And then here's all the trim. T-molding coming along through here. It's totally nice. Really pretty. And you see how nicely and precisely we mitered these and put them together. I mean, it's super detailed. Marty's over there right now doing the finishing touches of putting all the furniture back and cleaning it up. This was a fun job. We enjoyed this one. This is the first area that did that we did when we were here the first week. And now that the furniture is put back, I mean, you can just you can just see how this wood floor has really enhanced the look and the feel of this house. Um, without a doubt, it's raised the, the value of the home.